You will walk kingdom power to you. Days of his
God's presence is an opportunity that we will seize. Hallelujah. Never get too familiar with God that you take his presence for granted. The Bible says, unto the Lord shall the gathering of his people be. People of God, any time we are gathered together, the impossible is bound to happen. Never take God's presence for granted. said anything can happen hallelujah any bear God is presence what can happen anything beyond your imagination beyond your request as far as God is present there anything can happen I pray that God Almighty will yet visit us again in the name of Jesus he won't just visit us he will encounter us in the name of Jesus I have a few more minutes to leave this podium, but I would like to read from the book of Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Thank you, Bible. God bless you. Thank you. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. The Bible says, All no one anything. Except to love one another. For he who loves as what? For he who loves another as fulfilled the law. Hold no man anything except to love. For he who loves another as fulfilled the law. Hallelujah. This is a very powerful scripture. The Bible says. Do not hold anyone anything except the depth of love. I want us to pray this afternoon. Lord, help me to love you the way you love me. That's the first prayer. Two prayers in one. Hallelujah. Lord, help me to what? Help me to love you the way you love me. Lord, give me the grace and the enablement to love others. The grace and the enablement to love others. Can we pray in the name of Jesus? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you, oh God, you will give us the grace to love you. The way you have loved us in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you this afternoon that you will give us the grace to love you. The way you have loved us. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Father, help us to love you the way you have loved us. Help us to love one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to love one another in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us the grace to live a life of love in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ to be help us, oh God, to love in the name of Jesus, Lord, teach us love, the God kind of love. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, please help us to love. Help us to love in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. I want to believe that we have understanding of this scripture. Because some of us, is when we pray that, Lord, let my enemy fall down and die. We pray so passionately. Hallelujah. Or when we are asking God, give me a new car or give me a new job or a change of level, we can pray with favor. Hallelujah. These are powerful prayers. We should also pray with passion. The Bible says in the book of First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. And I will start reading from verse 7. It said, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. I'm going to read it again. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone who loves 
is born of God and knows God. How do we know you know God? How do we know you have encountered God? Is the fulfillment of this scripture. If you don't love, then you don't know God. One of the litmus tests of our knowledge of God is our ability to love one another. But it's unfortunate that even in the fall, there's so much strife, there is so much envy, there's so much malice, there's so much jealousy. Somebody will say, eh, I'm older than him. He should have seen me, he should have greeted me first. If he didn't greet me first, then I won't greet him. Hallelujah. Strives, envy, jealousy, bitterness. Somebody offended you and you find it so difficult to forgive. If you claim you know God, then you will love. Jesus told them, he said, if you bring your sacrifice, your offering to the altar, and you remember that your, your friend has something against you, it's not you have something against your friend. He said, if you remember that your friend has something against you, leave your altar, leave your offering at the altar. Go and first reconcile. Now, I'm asking the question is, you are not the one that offended the person. No. This person offended you. Jesus is teaching us, leave your sacrifice on the altar. Go and make peace with the person who offended you. That is a higher call. That is a higher call. That is not a teaching for babe. Hallelujah. Yes. So much bitterness, so much strife. Reason why many of us, we are in this state, we are not moving forward. Because when it time we pray, your prayer is bouncing. The roof is bouncing it. Because why is it that we invest so much in prayers? And is it that God is deaf? No. The ears of the Lord is not deaf that he cannot hear. Is it God, God is not a wicked God. If you meet the prerequisite, he's willing to answer our prayers. Lord, give me the grace to live a life of peace with all men. Give me the grace to love. Even when people hurt me, the grace to forgive and let go of bitterness. Somebody cry to God. Somebody cry to God. Father, I receive grace in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, the true test that we know you is that we love one another. Help me to love you. Help me to love others. He said, love your enemies. Pray for those who spitefully use you and despise you. Lord, we ask for grace to love. In the name of Jesus, somebody you are not praying. Somebody you are not praying. Pray and ask God for grace. Lord, the grace to let go of bitterness. The grace to let go of heart. I receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me, oh God, to live a life of forgiveness. Help me, oh God, to live a life that pleases you. Help me to live in love with one another, even with my enemy. Help me to live in peace. Oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for grace. Somebody ask for grace. Somebody are not praying. God wants to hear your voice. If you ask for grace, we give you grace. But you need to ask. There are some of us, some people have offended you and you have said, no, I will not forgive. This is the time to ask God for mercy. Ask God for mercy. Lord, give him the grace to let go of bitterness. Give him the grace to let go of strife. So much strife. Reason why we are where we are. Lord, please give me the grace. Give me the grace. I don't want to waste my time. I don't want to waste precious time in this retreat. I don't want my prayer to, 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 to not reach heaven. Please give me the grace to live a life of love. A life of peace in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, help us. If you don't help us, we can't help ourselves. If you don't help us, we can't help ourselves. Many people are living in bitterness. Many people are living in strife. We are living in envy. Ask God for mercy. Lord, please show us mercy. Lord, please show us some mercy. We come in our adoration this evening. Can we pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute? Reko Zatalia la Barona Shikatelia Laba. Leke Zuse Ketelia la Barana Shataya. How with that sister can pray better? How with that prince that can pray better? Somebody tutored you. You invested so much in that relationship and you vowed you will not forgive that brother. 
Yes, the brother has married. You vowed you will not forgive him. Pray. Say, God, help my heart to let go of what? Help my heart to let go of bitterness. Le poroshi katalia la baranasia daba. And suze katalia la baruka shikapoli la manasia. There is somebody here. Somebody took advantage of you when you were a teenager. And you vowed you will not forgive that man. Pray to God. I receive grace to let go of every bitterness, of every pain in the name of Jesus. Leso para namadia katalia la barusia. Lord, show us mercy this evening. The grace to live the life of love, the life of sacrifice, we receive in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Mighty God, we thank you. Thank you because your Holy Spirit is here. He's here to help our weaknesses. We cry to you. There are many who have been out in this place. Past experiences has put us in a cage. Past experiences, unpalatable experiences with people, with brethren, with people we trusted. And we've held them in bitterness of heart. Almighty God, we ask for mercy. Please show us mercy. Give us the grace to let go of hearts. Give us the grace to let go of bitterness. Help us to be like Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Somebody shout a better amen. prepare for the choir to take the next hymn. We'll still be rising on our feet but a quick announcement. Please, um, as we progress in the retreat, please kindly note that if you have a question, if you have something that you would like to communicate, please write it on a piece of paper. We'll be having a question and answer session tomorrow where those questions in our hands or the questions that arise from teachings or maybe an issue that you would like our fathers in the Lord and the Church of God to address, please kindly write it in a piece of paper. A basket will be behind, will be made available by the ushers and as well on the altar here. Not prayer points now, question and answer or an issue that you want addressed. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Over to us, Brian. Hallelujah. Please, can we stand as we take our hymn on page four? Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all. Please, can we rise as we take the hymn? Thank you.
lyrics of these hymns, let it turn to a prayer point from our hearts. Oh, make us love you more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody shout, Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. You may be seated in His presence. Oh, make me love you more and more. The atmosphere of the meeting is getting more intense spiritually. The Lord is, has been visiting us and He will yet visit us the more. We'll still take one, um, the, the, one of the stanzas of the hymn when I'm about to bring up uh, our Father and the Lord, God's servant who is here with us already. We'll take that. That's why I said the choir should um, stay around. The essence of this meeting I told you yesterday evening is for us to be better people not in terms of um, not in terms of wealth, fame, fortune position and possession we will be by the grace of God but more importantly in terms of our walk with God the nature of God the character of Christ being like God and that's why we are here In Matthew's Gospel, chapter number, uh, I beg your pardon, Mark's Gospel, chapter number 10. And um, if you read, I think from verse number 33 or so, Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, from verse number 33. Um, I appreciate the fact that we're all still work in progress. Say, I'm a work in progress. Every one of us still work in progress. But um, the Bible tells us we can get there. He says, unto a perfect man. In Ephesians 4, unto a perfect man. Unto a perfect man. One translation says, so that the saints can be matured. Maturing the saints. Perfecting the saints. So if they are saints, why are we talking about um, perfecting them again? Mark chapter 10, I said, from verse number 33. Mark chapter 10, from verse number 33. Is in a meeting like this, the word of God comes to us. And we reevaluate our spiritual life, our work with God, we reassess it. You know, Mark 10. Okay, let's go to verse 34 just to jump the queue. Um, verse 35, please. Go to 35. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. That's a, a request. Verse number 36. And he said unto them, What would you that I should do for you? Then there, this is the, the most um, pressing need of their life at the time. They said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your glory. Hmm. Verse 38, but Jesus said unto them, you know not what you are asking. Can you drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? Verse 39, and they said unto him, we can. And Jesus said unto them, you shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of and with the baptism I am baptized with, uh, you shall be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. Now, first of all, you could see carnality and this carnality in their hearts. Babes. They are actually desiring position and possession. Verse 41. And when the ten heard it, they began to be much displeased with the James and John. Um, one version says they were full of indignation. Some translations or some commentary said there was, a, there was an outbreak of temporary fight and misunderstanding before Jesus intervened. But Jesus called them to him. He had to call a meeting quickly. He called a conference and said unto them, You know that they which are accounted to rule over the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and their great ones exercise authority upon them. Verse 43, But so shall 
but so shall it not be among you. But whosoever shall be great among you shall be your minister. Now, after this particular event, in the, in the Matthew parallel, that's chapter 20 of Matthew, uh, these same boys hired their parents uh, and their mom went and knelt down before Jesus and made the same request. As if that was not enough. And again, they were much displaced. In fact, that one was even more severe. The fight almost broke out. So, we see three things here. Number one, these are disciples who had been with Jesus for this while, but their pressing need and hard desire was about position and possession. Number two, the fact that with their work with Christ for three years or almost, you could still see that there was strife, division, fighting, selfishness among them. James and John specifically. What do we have amongst us today? You'll be amazed. The, um, on three occasions in this campground, I've had to settle some discord and issues among brethren. In the midst of profound move of God, midst of profound happenings, on three different occasions almost. We need to get to that point where we say to God, maturity, perfection, or nothing. I pray that our coming here will not be a waste. Our coming here will not be in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I need you to take the bull by the horn and say, Lord, I know you have sent me to heal the sick. At this time, they had gone to heal the sick. They had returned. They had gone to cast out demons. They had returned. But you could see selfishness, self-centeredness, strife, schism, division, attacks among them. Desire for vainglory. Their desire was one on the right, one on the left. Not for the essence of spirituality, but for position and possession. And Jesus had to rebuke them. What is the state of your heart? What is your desire? What fills your mind? What is uppermost on your heart? And I told you, time is ticking. Time is ticking. How many more years do we have? <laughs> How many more years? May God bless you. I say, may God bless you. May God impart your life. May we receive a word that would change us for the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. The choir will take the last stanza of the hymn they took in a moment. We are privileged to have God's servant in the house. Our Father in the Lord is being part of this meeting over and over again. He's never tired of coming to bless us. Is the general superintendent of the ward uh, commission, ward assembly based in Ilori. No other person than Reverend Isaac Omole. Please, let's give the Lord a big hand of praise for Daddy Omole. I was speaking, I had a chance to say a word in the Four Square Gospel Church where he ministered last weekend and I announced to those people that we in this ministry we are never tired of listening to him speak preach and minister to us never tired I've had people say well let's shuffle ministers so that we can give space and time but, well maybe for ministers without prejudice who don't have much to offer but when you have the privilege of being close to a man that God has graced and blessed in the word, in grace, in power, in anointing, in revelation, you want to hear from him all the time. So we are privileged to have you again, Daddy. We do not take it for granted. God bless you for honoring our invitation. So after the aim, uh, Daddy Omole will come up. Over to you, choir.
haven't traveled the fivefold ministry full circle. I can only come to terms with eternal values. And I've also seen the stupidity of thinking or endeavoring otherwise. What is even more disgusting in the, in the text, the passage, the short exhortation that Buega gave to us is the fact that these position seekers were seeking a position in the kingdom to call when I used to go to farm we once saw the whole of a rat and we knew the rat was there so my other siblings brought home cutlass for us to dig the hole to go and kill the rat. Then an argument ensued. Who would take the tie? Who would eat the, the hand? Who would eat the head? We were on that argument when the rat ran away. <laughs> This kingdom that you are talking about is you are talking about it, the kingdom that is coming. We don't even know yet whether you will get there. And you are not even thinking of the prerequisites, the needs and all the efforts you need to put in place for you to get there. You at least have to get there first before you find your seat. In those days in my church when uh, we were expanding very rapidly and there was a if you don't come on time, you don't find seat. There were these women who used to carry their bag to reserve seat. And my pastors were becoming um, offensive about that because we found out that some of the bag that were used to reserve seat, the people didn't come. And there were those who couldn't find seat. I think it is more urgent for us to think about and consider the fact that we need to first of all make it home before we take seat. Whether you will take seat on a, on a certain left or right position, get there first. Get there first. May you get there. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. The way he gave them was the reverse of hierarchy like you want to build from teacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, apostle. No, he started from up. And he gave some apostles, then the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. And the reason he did that it's what we find in verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till, 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 till. That is, he gave what he gave for the purpose for which he gave. And to drive the objective. To drive the objective till, till the end. 
till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby the lying wait to deceive. I began my story by telling you of the privilege I have. I'm grateful to God. In many ways, I am lucky. To have traveled the circumference of the fivefold ministry and to operate the machine and be a witness of the outworking of the officers. And to have painfully also now come to see the perversion of the very objectives for the giving of the offices. The objective for giving the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the pastoral, and the teacher. The objective, the objective, And where we seem to miss it some of the times is because we lost sight of the objective. That the apostolic, the gift, the evangelist, the healing, the signs, the wonders, the miracles. When you talk of miracles, signs and wonders, there are things I see all the time. But the objectives. You know how many times we who are in the healing ministry have lost sight of the objectives. And we go around the healing people and we did not discuss their lifestyle. That's how I went to Aituru. And I prayed for a man who was impotent. And when he had become healed, he started impregnating the girls. <laughs> we lost sight of the objectives. He was lame. We healed him. He now attends party from evening till daybreak. Spiritually, he was better off lame. And when we saw this, we felt it would have been better if we left him lame. But that way he will get to heaven. He was blind. We opened his eyes. Then he started watching pornography. He was better off blind. Because that way he will get to heaven. There are no blind people in heaven. There are no lame people in heaven. The emotional and sensational aspects of the fivefold ministry having been perverted and abused. Today we filled our churches with beneficiaries of miracles who don't know Jesus. And that is the reason the church is rotten the way it is. Because we lost the objectives. The person drinking kai kai and kai kai entered inside his his uh, Intestine and dig pits inside it, then he had stomach ulcer. He brought stomach ulcer to our crusade. We heal him. And we did not talk to him about drunkenness. 
And we are so eager to put those sensational miracles in our magazines to publicize not heaven. To make popular not heaven, not Jesus. Having traveled around the full circle of the fivefold ministry, I wish there were six so I could go to the next one. I'm able to come to this same conclusion of what was the objective of this fivefold ministry being given. I see crowds being gathered today, and I ask myself, what end? Listen, the giver of the fivefold ministry has also declared the, his intentions right from the beginning so that the abusers will hear it loud and clear. That he gave what he gave. He gave some apostles, gave some prophets, gave some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. He gave what he gave for the reason he gave. That these gifts and talents and officers in the various offices were meant to operate their offices for, 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 for the perfecting of the saints. Not this system in which the saints are growing maggots under the apostolic, under the prophetic, under the evangelistic under the pastoral. A lot of times when we sit down to review our spiritual status and position, we come to this same question. What is all this? The officers in these fivefold ministries are to be indicted and be brought to question. If in the end, the saints, the saints are not being brought into perfection. Because of my position in the body, I have authority to speak to you as a man that will give account. Being fully aware that when I get home, they will ask me, what did you tell them? And I have since given up the illusion of thinking that everybody will hear me and obey. But I am struggling myself to have my scripts marked that I told them. I told them. That these five-fold ministries in their hierarchies as they were put was given for the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. Not for the work of the denomination. But for the work of the ministry. Every denomination owe it to themselves. They owe it to Jesus. They owe it to their own values and members. That ministry is ministry. We only brought wrappers of denominations to wrap it. As we are sitting down here, this is the best fellowship because that's how it will be when we get to heaven. But there are different churches here seated. That's how it will be when we get to heaven. Fellowship. Ministry. For the work of ministry. Not for the man of God, not for the apostle, not for the prophet, not, not for the evangelist, not for the pastor, not for the teacher, for the work of ministry. Sir. Look, when you are trained in, in a medical school, for instance, you are trained to cure diseases. No doctor is graduated to be treating Yoruba people. Only. There is no such medical school in Nigeria. Where you are a doctor and you have, you've been graduated just to treat 
uh, Hausa people just to treat Igbo people. No. You are, you are trained to treat men and women wherever they are found. But when we have now built denominations in which ministry can only operate within the cocoon and lately you can't even preach you can't, pre you, you can't operate ministry as a minister we have built certain walls around the saints for the perfecting of the saints and we have built walls around the saints that certain officers in the apostolic, in the prophetic in the pastoral, in the teaching, in the evangelistic no longer have access to the saints Last month, the general overseer of Foursquare called me. He said, sir, we need you to do something for us. We have annually the gathering of pastors in Foursquare that they will be going to like 7,000, 8,000, sometimes they are more that he will want me to be the main speaker in that conference. I told him I'm not a four square member. He said he knows but that I am a member of the body of Christ. And then I am an elder. He said the body has to be opened up to allow other, uh, other colleagues to come into the system and ventilate the system. Otherwise, the inside will become stuffed. Oh, clap for the general myself, of course. He said, we have to open the window, open the door, and let fresh air come to ventilate the system. Otherwise, the inside will become stuffy. That's very representative of a leader who has the mindset of the body and could allow the members to access other graces that may not be found. Because there's no way God put everything. You have to be humble enough to admit. Uh, and the ministry of the fivefold to the saints to perfect them. To perfect them. This issue of perfection has to be dealt with head on. This issue of perfection of the saints has to be dealt with head on. And when we don't have perfect saints, then we are to ask the officers in the fivefold. Because those offices were created and endowed and gifted, deployed for the perfecting of the saints. When the saints are therefore not in their perfect shape, we are to ask the officers what happened. In Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. Because we have found different excuses for our indulgences. And some of our leaders did not help us any better. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Jesus did not die for Abraham. If it was demanded then that far back that the whole world was only 17 chapters old, and God came to Abraham to demand perfection. 
Jesus did not die for Abraham. Abraham had no Bible. Abraham had no church. Abraham had no pastor. Abraham. What do you mean, Abraham? Abraham in his old form. And God demanded a perfect work from a man in the Old Testament. Abraham did not speak in tongues. Excuse me. And I hear it today among the saints that nobody is perfect. Because I need perfect. Okay. You are the one saying that. About yourself. In order to excuse yourself from the indulgences and the various compromises to which you have signed. When God says you should be perfect, you are the one saying that nobody is perfect. If it was not possible for Abraham to be perfect, God would not demand it. Let's tell ourselves the truth. Be on your tongue. What is that? Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect. Even as your father which is in heaven is perfect. This is in the Bible that is in your hand. There is no Old Testament perfection as against New Testament perfection. What God required of Abraham was what Jesus required of himself. And in my view, we stand a better opportunity to comply and to attain and to work out the details of that perfection and to utilize all the facilities that have been provided for us to attain to such perfection, to such state, a blameless state. When I was teaching my children this lesson, because they are growing in another generation that I don't belong, and yet the requirement of perfection has no, has no generational uh, uh, It's as current in Matthew chapter 5 verse 48 as it was current in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. At the risk of being misunderstood, Yet, I stand to say, you see, we are told that when we are, we are, we are to pray, we are to say, our Father which is in heaven, how do we that he that he will come, forgive us our sins. So, you know, you are not going to go to our school, but I will say, you are not going to go. But what they say is, you are not going to go. They say, I am They say, I am your mother. They say, I am your mother. So, I am your mother. Sense stuff that have been walked into our prayer life in order to create space for our indulgences and compromises. It's not allowed. It's not allowed. Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. Are the elementary lessons in prayer. You are expected to grow and leave that behind. Paul said, when I was a child. I 
and do things like a child. There is allowance that is allowed for when you are growing up. The big issue in our embarrassment as trainers and coach is the fact that we have not been able to see people who could say when I was a child. That is, I used to do this before, but I have outgrown it. The embarrassment in our training and scheme of raising people is the inability to get men to stand up to their responsibilities and be able to say, um, I used to, because when I was a new convert, but I have grown it. That was the implication of what Paul was telling me in the first Corinthians chapter 15, when I was a child. So there are things we permit, there are things we allow. We give it to your growing up days. But that is the reason why the fivefold ministry is now given. For you to be able to exit certain stages of spiritual development and be able to say, yeah, we used to do that. That's my problem with Brother Aaron. That people came to Aaron and say, as for this Moses, we don't know whether he will come back or he will not come back. Come and make idol for us. They will not go to him and make that demand if they don't have an idea that he could do it. So, what I expected Brother Aaron to have been able to say, when Aman Shetele, there are certain things you could delete in your mind and give that to your pastor. If Brother Aaron had come up to say, well, you are here and you want me to help you do idol. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. By my new position, I'm the chief priest in Israel. By my new appointment, by my new calling, I no longer know how to do it. There are things you should no longer know how to do. You should dismantle your intelligence. You should put in recession certain faculty that you have because you have demented that and you have advanced certain knowledge in the direction of God. And you should be able to say, well, I used to do that before, but excuse me, I no longer know how to do it. I have people in my church who have been there for, for 20 years who are still fighting their wives. And when I came back from the field one day and they were calling me, pay Alagba, that the elder and his wife that, we, we, that they are quarreling, pay King King Lodasi, Muno Sekwikon Ba Misofunko Lupa. If you tell me, say, oh no, you're my love, why? I want to show you, 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 I said for 20 years you have been in this church. By now, there should be people who just joined the church who don't understand the Bible and they are having misunderstanding at home. You are the one I'm to send to. Go and help me settle it. But when you want mama, I said, Lupa. <laughs> people who fail to grow become an embarrassment to their parents. At the age of 10, you are still tired. Still giving feeding bottles. But the very essence and purpose of the fivefold ministry was for the perfection of the saints. 
There was something I wanted to say. I fell off my line of argument. <laughs> I've been afraid to go back there, but I will. I told my children. I'm not telling you. I told my children. I said, look at me. You are growing up with these boys and girls all over the place. You are on the internet watching this kind of jumps. I said, when the Bible says, when we are praying, we should confess our sins. I did my hand like this. I said, if I have to confess a sin today, I don't know what to confess. I have walked with God. I can only use my life to preach to you. And when I'm preaching to you and I cannot use my life, I'm deceiving you. I'm telling you the truth. That if I am asked to start confessing sins as I stand here, I can't find. That is not to say I am an angel, but I say I can't find. And if there is any, let God remind me today and see whether it will live till 6 p.m. The requirement for the life here because of the life there it's incumbent upon the apostolic, upon the prophetic, upon the evangelistic, the pastoral, and the teaching ministry to produce saints that have no sins to confess. They say, I'm a mother. Ati ai mo mother. Gugu ele papo. They say, I'm a mother. That is the one you knowingly commit. And the ones you unknowingly commit, you bundle them together. You want to come. I had asked when we were in Surulere that Enoch worked with God. And God took him away. And when they got to heaven, the people in heaven did not say, where are you bringing this from? Let it be where. We gave him seat to sit down. Because he had been living the life of heaven. Ditto. When the chariot God was using, I look, I believe in holiness. I believe in holiness. I believe in righteousness. I'm a Puritan. It's too late to change. That when God sent the chariot he was using to come and bring Elijah, and Elijah was carried to heaven, and the people in heaven did not ask, Where are you bringing this one from? Where is this one from? They gave him seat to sit there, and Elijah lived in this same world. Enoch lived here, not another world. He married. His children went to school, their school at that time. The wife used to go to market. Enoch lived here. And the people in heaven did not look at the chariot and say, where is you bringing this one from? Again, they gave Elijah a seat. Say, welcome, sit down. And uh, be part of us. Because, as I say, he had been living the life of heaven on what do you think Jesus was saying when he said when we pray we should say thy will be done on earth as it is. Or 
was this place not once like heaven? The fact of perfection arising from the inputs of the fivefold ministry is established in this text that we are talking about and the goal and the objective and the target is unto a perfect man. Which makes maturity a development. You develop into it. Unto a perfect man. Unto a matured man. The allowances that are created in the progression and the developmental stages that allow Paul, allow Paul, allow Paul to be able to say, when I was a child, to be able to say, when I was a child, I did childish stuff. But when I had become an adult, I gave up childish stuff because I have become an adult. The embarrassment today is that people in church who are adults have not given up childish stuff. And it's making their management difficult. If you talk too much, you will not come to church again. Because there is another church that allow him the way he is. So he goes there and feel good with the stench and the maggots. He's making hard stuff, preaching truth to become tough and difficult. Because if we talk tough, you will live. You'll be offended and you will leave. And we don't want to lose you. So we are afraid of you. We don't want to lose you. Look at what we have suffered. As we have paid for you to come to the point where you are now. You must deliberately give allowance for the direct input of the apostolic materials. For the direct input of prophetic materials. You must be somebody who can manage the evangelistic materials. You must be able to handle the fivefold. We need you to grow in a gradient. That's what growth is all about. Growth is a virtue. Growth is a development. Growth is beautiful. We who are parents are so, we, we, we cheer we, 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 when our child begins to stand up for the first time. You, you can imagine, ask the mothers who are in the house, how they will be clapping. And they take two steps back and be saying, come. He's standing for the first time. Growth is exciting. Growth is inspiring. Growth is fulfilling. Growth is to take you to where you should be. If not for Adam and Eve, and only those two, and never any third one, who came to this place as adults, If not for Adam and Eve, who did not grow? If not for Adam and Eve, who did not experience the virtue and the beauty of growth? They came here as adults. But you also know that that did not work. Because they skipped certain crucial stages in the human life. And God now said, if there will be a third person, that one will have to be born and grow, including Jesus. Abimosi also. 
e ti pada leyin mi ko lo ma pada leyin oluwe aflayo ji wona to ji wa pelu mi ti mo so ni pe god made only two as adults but if there will be a third and a fourth now there are 8 billion people in this world they all came one by one to were able but nobody came here as adult again even jesus was to be born and grew you already did that the child grew in wisdom and in stature growth is a virtue Growth is a product of several inputs. The process of eating the correct diet. <laughs> Desire the sincere milk of the word that you may Insincere meal of the world. And you will not grow with that. I'm an animal scientist. I'm a livestock man. On the farm, there are animals we don't want them to grow for some reasons. So we give them synthetic milk. We go and make artificial milk. It's not milk. You taste it, it's like milk, but we see how in the pigry we train pigs training you enter a piggery, you can sit down and eat. Because we have trained all the pigs to be you defecate in one place. The man who takes care of them, he packs their feces from one place. But if you see one to anywhere, and making management difficult, We give them synthetic milk. So that oh my da aga aga, oh my da guru. Ulama koko ta lo joto ni bara badi. So when Peter was saying, desire the sincere milk of the world, I, I am an animal scientist. I know that there are sincere milk and there are insincere milk. We produce them. And when, when Paul was telling the Ephesians so that you will not be somebody who is so easily deceived, you grow well, you grow normally, you, your mind, your mental capacity, your faculties are straight and you are brilliant. And it's down to what type of food were you giving? What type of preaching were you hearing? What type of messages were you hearing? That's what forms the milk of the world. That's what forms the basis of your growth. That forms the nutrient. That forms your feed, your, your, your feed quality. Your, your, your growth is a product of what you eat. Your, product, your, your, your growth is a product of how frequently you eat. Your growth is a product of your discipline. How early do you sleep? Or you sleep late? You are living a rough life. Your product, your, your growth is a product of many factors. Now, we can't do any more than giving you even the good milk. We can't do any more than giving you the good food. We can't do any more than giving you the balanced diet. Tobati jeton, it's your duty to digest it. It's your duty to assimilate it. Where you have problem with that, we can't help you. We can't help you. We can't help you. We can't help you. 
Into a common, no laughing, but over a certain crisis of his own. We can't digest, he can't assimilate. These are all issues in development and growth that you must be able to digest. I can feed you, but I can't help you to digest the food. I can feed you, but I can't help you to assimilate the product of digestion. It is your responsibility to use the food to build yourself. And when you have problem with that, you have problem with that. We can't help you. Unto a perfect man. Till. So you are supposed to grow till. You are supposed to develop till. Your development should go on till. You come to the unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the son of God. This knowledge. Of the son of God. Is coming from the materials the teachers are delivering. The teachers in the fivefold. This knowledge of God that we are talking about is coming from the what you are able to do to ingest the materials that have been delivered by the teachers, the office of the teachers. People can grow. That is my problem. We started Christianity when we came into Christianity. We started Christianity. We didn't start on a crusade ground. We started in discipleship class. Science and miracles, science and wonders don't grow Christians. Science and wonders don't grow Christians. It can grow the number, but it does not grow the individual. So you could have signs and wonders that bring a lot of people together, and that is where we miss it. We who are evangelists are in the trouble of those who are supposed to provide complementary services in providing discipleship programs for the new converts that we bring into the kingdom. But we revel, the reveling in the number. The reveling, you see it on the, they even deliberately show it on television. See our number. They deliberately show it to, to hype their ego. <laughs> you see, we, we look, we, be, we who are evangelists, ah, the problem with the number. We know what to do when we need the numbers. We know what to do when we need the numbers. But numbers don't take anybody to heaven. It is discipleship that can bring you to the knowledge of Christ. This knowledge of Jesus we are talking about. Look, 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 look. The knowledge, if the knowledge you have today as a nurse, you went to a nursing school. The knowledge you have today as a lawyer, you went to law school. The knowledge you have today as, as a doctor, you went to, 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 to a medical school. And I have asked, I asked in Suru Lere, you the reign of Fuminiansa, Boyama Riloni. Tell them of people This knowledge of Christ, this knowledge of the Son of God, this knowledge. This knowledge of the Son of God is imparted by the teachers in the house. To be an engineer, you went to a polytechnic, you went to some school. The church also have their own schools. A friend of mine once said that there are two prices to pay in the kingdom. The price to be saved, Jesus paid. But whatever else you will become, after you have become a Christian, you are the one to pay. If you become anything, you are the one to pay. The church also have their own schools. We have Sunday school. 
we have Bible study. In the 80s, I was not just part of the sightseeing, I was part of the building of the first house in this country. Not many things have happened in Christianity in this country behind me. Quote me. In the 80s, all our Bible studies midweek became miracle services. Billy Akoni, who was lamenting uh, recently, we are on the same page on many issues. He said all the Bible studies in the 80s, this, the Sunday school, the Bible studies, they became miracle services. We converted them to miracle services. So we are now having people who are saved who are not taught. Because in the schools, in the training programs that the church has want to convert to Bible as a miracle service. Don't learn all in time. Brethren who are produced on those syllabus. Would you be ready? If the polytechnic in Ibadan is now never fed the engineer one credit in Yoruba Another credit ni Ibu. Then only ni pass ni government. Then Kolosh engineer. Was the problem Lori? If it's a problem, I want to pay Mba to Bajadi to lose a service today. Or by the Ministry of Works. Bridge to design. We borrow. We borrow. <laughs> we, <laughs> we borrow lori konja lori every jida wo. Mbo jack me credit ni nu yoba. Lu lori se engineering. Oh na wo lori. I was sharing it in school lori. One of her. Well, you know my wife has orphanage. And the University of Illinois Christian Union brought a child. And we asked, what is the history? They said they went out for evangelism. And one lady gave her life to Christ. One point, she said, oh, no, 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 no. Go give her life to Christ. So, brother, Lara, I want leaders, Tony Kuba, she follow up from, who she follow in. <laughs> now, the very weekend, remember, let's follow up. On lot if you know you. When she was a sinner in the world, you church in not if you you. And we, the Christian Union, decided to assign him because what we were going to lay, brother, I lose a Jim Jim. I want Jim Jim, brothers, to say Jim Jim. She had to rebel. It does a Jim Jim. And the reason they brought the baby was because they want us to help take care of the baby so the girl can go back to school. And we had to apologize to the girl afresh to let her know that that's not how the church is. We have to re-evangelize her. And we have produced churches today that now need re-evangelization. We are now having to give altar call in a pastor's conference. This development should go on until graduation to a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ that we henceforth be no more children. That is the issue. The objective is that you should no more be children. Don't forget that Paul was writing to the Ephesians adults. He was writing to grown up church people. He was writing to their pastor. He was writing to the elders in Ephesus that they should no longer be children. This children now is not biological. It's spiritual. I want to say that 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 I want to say that
atun soro a so fagbalagba pe ko ma tun je omo de that is to say awon kan to ye ko ti dagba ko ja e ta expect pe o ti ye ko ti outgrow e won ni agba o ki soro bi ewe that we henceforth be no more children that is the issue how not to remain children no fault of yours being a child when you were one but you will be at fault when you continue to be no fault of yours when you behave like a child because you are a child we all came here as children including jesus but the problem will be if you continue as a child you are supposed to outgrow childhood stuff he said that we be no more children to store and fro carry about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby the lion wait to deceive. We and I were discussing outside when I came about one of the biggest names in miracles in this country and the kind of damage they are doing. They are very rich now. He has bought aeroplane. Yes, I mean, but now we know how he bought it. We know how he got the money. When they come to a meeting, the announcement will be made. Those of you who want to see the apostle, you should register over there. Then somebody register you. Then they will screen you. The screening process requires you to tell us your name, tell us where you come from, tell us certain details about your personal biodata, and they take it down. Now, when you now get to the meeting in the evening, then the man of God will call your name and tell you your village, and tell you your age, and tell you the color of your car, and tell you. So what happened in my friend's church in Ibado? And the person who was so perfectly described, he was called out and told those details. And everybody was screaming and shouting. Holy Ghost. Yeah. Now, the following Sunday that uh, the sister who went to invite him, this person talked to me two days ago in pain that I brought him to church and he was the first person to be called out and told and told and told and we were all excited but now that the meeting was over and I needed him to follow me back to church you are the first person the Holy Spirit called out. He said, Look, which Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit can call anybody. Only, one, only which Holy Spirit? I bet don't talk to me. See, all that the man of God said was what the screening officer had taken from him. That the screening officer got those details and had relayed it to. And then the man of God now called him out and was telling him to those details. And everybody was screaming. He said, There is nothing in this one. Wait, what in the cast is screaming? He been wanting by Bobo details. Bobo Timos of one, no, no, guys, of one will receive me by this. We won't read on Kong Kong. We won't read on Kong Kong. If he was. An, un an average unbeliever before, he had now become chronic. To buy an average unbeliever, now that he has seen the trick in the church, he had become more hardened. Now he's not, he's not against church. He doesn't want to hear anything about church. This is how what, what Paul was saying that. We should outgrow the stage where people can call you and tell you look, your local government. But we are too soft local government to do it. She might be a door. But also for local government to do it. Can you tell me that she might be missing? She might be missing. 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 She might be And these things don't help the quality of Christianity. It doesn't. In fact, it worsens it. 
those fellows have made money from, from brethren who are not grounded. You should come to a point where you can ask yourself that you call me out and tell me the local government I came from. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. What about it? at my expense. May God help you to be able to discern and know them. Yeah. But you will know them when you are well taught that these people are not really about heaven. Any church you go, any message you hear that does not improve on your person, spiritual personality that does not throw your life into a sieve and take course and take chaff any message you are hearing that does not improve the quality of your life it didn't remove certain unwanted matters from your life it doesn't co 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 every message you hear in church must be a message that is taking something bad out of your character it's making you to drop something off. It's helping you to, to give up some unwanted materials. Every message you have, every message you hear must end up in improving the quality of life that you live. You must leave that place better than you came. You must be a better character person. Be a better mannered brother. Be a better quality sister. Be somebody who knows better about life. Everlasting life. Eternal life. All the people we open their eye here, they, 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 they became blind again. Sebi lasa rupadaku. Abi? Okusa. Sebi lasa rupadaku. Let your spiritual senses be built to recognize spiritual quality and the longevity of it. Lazarus died again now. So people will go on Jinya, you 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 will go on Jinya. I was in a church in, uh, in Hawaii and they were doing Thanksgiving for a brother. And I asked my host pastor, she's a woman, what happened to this brother that we're doing? One of my uncle, I want to pray a band. I want to pray a band. So, Oju me know what's often we say, a late on year, but I told next time to buy the coons in back with me. Oh, but I was my man, no Because the woman explained and made herself very clear. He said, Now that we have brought you back, if you backslide now, back with you, dancing, the bar backslide is insane. But is she back? About if we left you, you will enter heaven. But now that we bring you back, if we, we are at risk by bringing you back. So, this is the last time we will do Thanksgiving for you. Don't make sure. <laughs> make sure you don't die again because the next time you die, nobody in this church is going to pray for you. We will let you go. Go. Go away. You finish your... your, your this is why you die and wake up. You die and wake up. When you wake up this time, wake up on the other side. Don't come now. Mawabi, mo. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord help you to be a good manager of spiritual materials. To be somebody who can handle bone. In First Corinthians chapter three, verse one. Paul spoke about this as I close. First Corinthians chapter 3. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual. What is that, George? 
gifts of the Holy Spirit in chapter 11, chapter 12, chapter 14. There's no other church in the New Testament that Paul wrote about spiritual gifts to like the Corinthian church. They were the most spiritually endowed and gifted church in the whole of the New Testament. And Paul was telling that church that he could not speak unto them as unto spiritual, but as unto canal, even as unto babes in Christ. So, but if they for nature chapter fourteen, yeah, wata 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 wata. Ija, oma oma fura oleche, we no church. Come to Jadi. We belly ni kono joko e kilowatt shembi bay. Seba polo ni wanteli kilowatt shembi bay. Ma funleche to ju e ma. Verse two. Verse 2, verse 2. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it. Neither yet. Now, only to the divine sense of you. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yes, Now he got home and people are asking what happened to you. No one will let you in church. You won't be in the kilo one be by Seba Polo, you won't tell me. Seba Polo, you won't tell me. Kilo one, you can't do one. No one will let you. No Jew ever will. Verse 3. Verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and work as men? So there is an expectation in these last three words that. You are not expected to work as men. We expect you to have left men behind. So you don't bracket with the others. Oh. For while one said, I am of, Ap of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? This is where the issue of unity which was implicated right from the beginning. Go back to verse 13 of uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 4. Till we all come in the This was the original objective in the drive, the momentum of our development and maturity to mature, mature beyond anything that separates us, break through the line and come to the large place of the body of Christ. That when we get to heaven, we will all be saints, we will all be redeemed people, ransomed, washed by the blood of the Lamb, and there will be no segregation. But if the level of segregation we are having in the body of Christ today in Nigeria, of course, it won't enter heaven. And we have developed that denominationalism to the level of hatred. There's no problem. All of us can belong to the same denomination. But please, leave the doors open. For the sheep. Leave the doors open. This caging is too much. It's antibody. It's anti-heaven. We can't all be in Baptist. We can't all be in uh, uh, Methodist. We can't. But please, leave the doors open. Because in the end, 
Bible says it shall be one fool and one shepherd. Rise up for prayer. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord. Bind us together. Bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only song. Wait, wait. I want all of us to sing. I want all of us to sing this song. Because that is also the very essence of this talk. Find it somewhere. Choir, can you come? Oh, yeah, can you hear me? Amen, mom.
many branches, but there is only one One vine. vine. Branch lupo, but he did give your con.
perfect unto a perfect unto maturity unto a perfect man unto maturity unto a perfect man unto maturity unto a perfect man unto a perfect man unto maturity help me lord help me lord this is a prayer time please pray please pray just few more minutes before we go on break please pray lord help me to go on to grow to maturity unto a perfect man unto maturity unto a perfect man oh god in the name of jesus help me oh god Help us, O oh God. Help me, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh God. As a church, O oh Lord. As individuals, help us to grow to maturity. Unto a perfect man. In the mighty name of Jesus. O oh God, help me. O oh God, help me. I don't want to be carnal anymore. I don't want to remain a babe. Help me, precious Father. Help me, my Lord and my King. Somebody pray a few more seconds. Help me, O God. 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 Help me, precious God. Help me, help me Lord help me Lord help me Lord few more seconds somebody pray this is prayer time this is prayer time pray 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 help me to grow to a perfect man unto maturity help me no longer a baby no longer children tossed about with every wind of doctrine no longer children no longer a baby no longer come on, no longer pray, no longer children. Just about the devil with the doctrine. Help me, my Lord. Help me, oh God. Help me, oh God, to grow to maturity, unto a perfect man in the name of Jesus. Help me, my God and my father. Ten seconds on. Pray. Make sure you are praying. mighty name we have prayed. We'll take one or two more prayer items before we close uh, this session. And at the end of those prayer items, I'll call Daddy Omolei again to please come and pray for all of us. How many of us believe that you, you, you're still um, some distance away from that perfection, from that maturity? How many people believe that? Only those who believe that we're going to be prayed for today. You know, we, we, we want to get onto that level of maturity, onto that level of perfectness, onto that level of uh, perfection. Uh, 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 Minister Ibagosomi was taking his session and was telling us about people who are keeping malice. And yet the Bible says, if you know that your brother has something against you, not you against him, your brother has something against you, he said, make peace, settle it, settle the scores. Lots of malice, lots of schism, lots of sectarianism in the body. Today is uncalled for. Look at, now, two more prayer points. Before the, now, how many of you observe that every part of what I preached yesterday, Baba mentioned it. Are you aware of that? And he has no idea what we preached yesterday. Part of what I preached yesterday, he mentioned the same scripture. And then part of what Apostle Amadi preached this morning he mentioned without being here and that can only be the holy spirit so the two major messages we've had before babazon he has mentioned almost everything we mentioned so the holy ghost must be saying something you had daddy saying that you can grow numerical strength through signs and wonders 
but you cannot grow individual spiritual life through signs and wonders it is not possible and that's what we've been hammering and telling us here in this meeting not only in this meeting in kpmi our churches all over the same thing we've been hammering and saying and talking about signs and wonders are not they are not issues with people with evangelistic ministry to the glory of god but we cannot grow you to maturity onto a perfect man with the ministry of signs and wonders alone it has to be solid teaching ministry and not just milk but what meat solid meat apostle amadi mentioned that also your menu what you feed on what you eat look at the corinthian church i wrote here when i was doing a write-up a welcome charge for this i wrote here that the corinthian church if you look at this now let me just say that in a few seconds i wrote here that the corinthian church are so blessed with grace number one they are enriched in all things blessed with utterance and eloquence blessed in all knowledge advantage okay blessed with all spiritual gifts then i wrote here i said but the following issues and problems confronted the corinthian church number one schism and divisions schisms and divisions and today we even pride in it denominationalism you had the man of god talking about building walls i mean he was talking about the general of uh, of, a, of a, one of the major missions here who is who, who said is opening up to the fivefold genuine fivefold ministry why my wife was talking to me or was it my stand law he said they have woken up because they, they, they were all, they all grew up in that denomination my father-in-law is been in that denomination for more than five almost five decades almost five decades right or, or more 50 years and opening up to the body ministry he gave apostles he gave prophets he gave evangel he gave teachers so they they were into schism and division then contention is there in this pamphlet contention and this is a church blessed spiritually blessed contention you had him saying that for those who didn't understand you know the yoruba language he chipped in when he was talking about the fellows in the corinthian church by the next day he was talking about the contention in corinthian church which is in first corinthians 1 11 that they physically not only verbally physically fight to the point that boxing matches take place and you you that you you skipped one of the things after the boxing match they will now sue themselves to court he mentioned it he said you take each other to court you want to take this one to court and then magistrate will be an unbeliever and the court will rule the case he said can't you judge these cases yourself eh? just put uh, some first aid medication on the guy's face and appease him and all that it was a serious now this is even underrated it must have been a serious matter the contention he said for it has been declared unto me by, uh, of you by my brethren by them which are of the house of chloe that there are contentions among you there are maybe those who have um, uh, dictionary synonyms of you will see what the word contention is tempers fled angry brethren exchange of verbal insults and then he escalates into blows like daddy was saying and eyes are swollen redness of eyes and then and then he goes into court cases and then when they meet on sunday prophecy continues is that right when they meet on sunday word of knowledge continues when they meet on sunday signs and wonders manipulation whether by guests or by spiritism or whatever it continues he continues and then <laughs> then i wrote here sectarianism first corinthians 1 12 sectarianism look at verse 12 sectarianism taking place in that church we are not there yet my heart bleeds and i'm wondering is this a church that jesus will come and rapture is this is a church brethren get contract within church inflate it go behind and tell the people who are the vendors and they tell them who oh, are low on church while well, we have money in our church inflate it pastor will pay it. inflate it inflate it add this to it <laughs> now this i say that every one of you said i am of paul i'm of apollos i'm of cephas and i of christ sectarianism 
Then verse, I mean, number four, carnality. Chapter three, verse one. Daddy has read it. Carnality. Number five, envy. Chapter three and verse three. Number six, strife. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Envy and strife. Some are supposed to be here today now. They are not here. Why? Strife and envy. There are some brethren who are supposed to be here. Strife and envy. And there are some who are supposed to be spiritual sons and daughters. And you try to settle scores for them, with them, among them. And then they take offense. And you don't see them, see them anymore. Strife. I hope strife won't take some to hell. I hope strife will not take you out of your place of spiritual location. Daddy was saying earlier on, he said, they, they've done it so much that if we become hard on them, they will leave. And they are making a, pardon? Yes, to another church that will accommodate their excesses. And they are making our jobs difficult. But you know what? We don't care. Jesus sent us to preach the word. We will preach the word. Say amen. amen. That's what he sent us to do. We will preach the word. We will, we will continue to bring this brand. This brand. We call it brand. The brand of Christianity or the brand of ministers who preach the undiluted word. So they go to other places. They don't want to subject themselves to discipline and instructions. And then verse, at number 7 here, he says they are puffed up. That's uh, 1 Corinthians 4, 18. He said they are also puffed up. Pride and arrogance. But they are still doing church. Numerical strength notwithstanding. See, we, I don't have a problem with numerical strength. And I've seen those who say they are Christians do the same job for you. And those who are Muslims do the same job. Can I tell you my, my conclusion? The ones who are Muslims have been have proven to be more honest. I don't know who is in the same shoe as I am. Look at those hands. They proven to be more honest than the ones we call brothers. That the one we call brother. Why, brethren? Why? Why? In the Corinthian church, there was so much covetousness. He mentioned it. Number ten. In fact, this number 10 generated arguments this morning. They were also had among them. What kind of people? Drunkards. And he didn't stop. He said, he mentioned drunkard. He mentioned here, drunkard. All these warnings was because it was going on. He had to mention that. So there are drunkards. There are those who drink. And like this, our man of God was saying, Apostle Amadi, he said, when you see people beginning to argue about certain things in the Bible, that, okay, where is it written that drunkenness will take you to hell? Apostle Mahdi said, take note. The person is already beginning to have thirst to become, to drink. When you hear people saying, after all, uh, Solomon had many wives. David had many wives. Uh, Abraham had married more than one wife. You know, at one point in his life, you know, and uh, uh, these people are, when you see people bringing such argument, the, there's, a, there's a crisis going on in their hearts. There's a longing. There's lust. There's crisis of lust going on. And they want to use scripture to justify it. Don't drink. The Bible says, give strong drink to those who are ready to do what? Who are ready to perish. He said, okay, let's look at the original translation. Let's look at the exegesis. Let's look at the Greek word and compare with the Hebrew. You're doing all this over a simple instruction. Will you die if you don't drink? I'm doing all the research over one simple instruction. Okay, given that is a controversial thing, will you not be safer to say, okay, it wouldn't take anything from me. I choose not to do it. If at the end of the day, I made a mistake, I should have been drinking a lot, you have lost nothing. You've lost nothing. And this is the Corinthian church. I want us to pray this prayer before we uh, break off. You have to deal with issues. We have, to, we have to sort things out here. And say, Father, help me. I want to grow to maturity. Baba God, please help me. I want to grow to a perfect man. Oh God, my Father, deal with, in my life, the works of the flesh. Lord, deal with habits in my life. Oh Father, help me, oh God, to go on to perfection. Help me to become a matured person. Help me, oh God, to leave the elementary 
elementary things of carnality. Help me, oh God, to leave carnality. Help me to move on to spirituality, true spirituality, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, my Lord and my God. Help me, King of glory. Help me, Lord of lords. Open your mouth and pray. Pray, pray, 30 seconds more. Lord, help me. Help my children. Help our children. Help us. Help us, oh God. Help our children. Help us, Baba God. Help our family. Help our church. Help us, my Lord and my God. Help me, King of glory. Romandaba, Shandaba, Lekatu Zopaliga, Vedebebebe, Zeteba, Frombe Zupa Kata, Lisoto Braliga Daba. Help us, Lord. 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 Thank you, Father. Reposo Paliga Daba, Shanda Bakori Masanda, Vekatu Soparanda, Lembo Soparanda, Jika Pori Makata. Veta Badaba, help us, oh God, help us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Now there are some of us who may be struggling with some things. You know, but this is a word of wisdom here. I was talking to one of, one of our spiritual sons. And I said, this hairstyle you have, this head do you have? Now, because he had a reason for it, actually. But I said to him, I said, look, doors are beginning to open for you. And people are beginning to respect your ministry, respect the grace of God on your life. I said, I know. Me, I know the reason why you had to uh, do this. But not many people will know out there. And we live in a world where um, uh, if you are not accepted societally or in the committee or community of the church, doors are likely to close against you. I said, why don't you do this? Why don't you forego the comfort you enjoy in putting your hair that way, the leisure, the stylish uh, uh, tease or taste Steez. Why don't you forego it? For the sake of doors that are bending that must open to you. In the eyes of God, you have not sinned. In the eyes of God, He doesn't stop you from heaven. However, there is uh, there are sect of people in the body of Christ who will not just listen to what you preach because of this. For the sake of your reach. For the sake of your ministry, for the sake of your constituency, the people God intends you to reach, forgo it. Did I make any sense here? For that sake, only for that sake. Oh, there, there's nothing wrong in it. There are things that you as an individual, nothing is wrong. It, may, it, it doesn't stop you from making heaven. But please, it will reduce your reach. Certain denominations will invite you. They will let you on their altar. They say, but God sees my heart. Only God sees your heart. They don't see your heart. So it's just wisdom. It's just wisdom. You let go. You let go. One lady, uh, one of our good friends back in, in, uh, back in the U.S. said to my wife, I won't allow you on my altar if you don't put on scarf. And then you have to also remove your earrings to preach on my altar. And then also you have to remove your bangles to preach on my altar. And then gave other conditions. And my wife said, why not? Why not? If it's to remove earrings, make sure you don't use attachment, make sure, gave all the conditions. And she said, why not? For me to reach the people, for me to be a blessing, why not? And she was there for those days and played to their rules. You don't need to argue and say, okay, if that's the thing, hold your... No! There are people God wants you to sacrifice. Sacrifice your own self taste, your taste, your style, your fashion way for the sake of the people. Do you get what I'm saying here? That's what we're saying here. Say, what is wrong? What is wrong? What is wrong? There's nothing wrong. This, that, that. We understand. But for certain reach, for certain uh, purpose of the constituency you represent 
you can let go some things. Shall we rise on our feet? Let me call Daddy Omolain to, to pray for us. My song every day, Father, draw me now. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I pray that the Holy Spirit will take control of your life. May the Holy Spirit take control of your appetite. May the Holy Spirit take control of the things you love to do. So much that the things he does not like you to do, you will hate them. He told one church in the Revelation, he said, to them that overcome, and that's a lot. Almost every church he has, he told that to whom who overcome, to them that overcome, to them that overcome. Then he spoke up, but those who don't overcome in a certain church, he said he will remove their name from the book of life. So I pray that you will overcome. Yeah. You will overcome lust. Yeah. You will overcome adultery. Yeah. You will overcome fornication. Yeah. You will overcome all drunkenness yeah. and all negative appetite. So shall it be until the perfect day in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. So um, we're going to be closing now, going on break. Dinner will be served.